on the floor. Yeah, put your arms out. You poof. And just kicked it out from underneath me. I ended up on my back. <laughs> if you did that now, man, imagine what would happen. Yeah. Well, my parents thought it was hilarious. Yeah, we, we, we watched the movie oh, with no, the stunt people kid. jumping off buildings. And yeah, I didn't realise at the bottom they had like a big thing for stunt people to fall on, like a big yeah. stunt <laughs> So we all went around the neighbourhood and collected all the cardboard boxes we could find from the bed. <laughs> and we put a pile of boxes and we went and climbed up a building like this and we all jumped on it. <laughs> and one guy broke his arm, everybody else is pretty okay. So yeah. <laughs> we used to jump off the roof into this tree and it was like a willow, so and you try to grab onto the. <laughs> Have you all finished? Yep. Kind of. What does that mean? No, it's a bit weak. It needs work, needs reviewing, reviewing. Sounds like it needs a performance plan. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my key outlines, but I've not done more. That's okay, don't worry. Uh, you don't have to present them all from the beginning. I'm going to talk a little bit about delivery, you know, things like Jason and Cam talked about earlier on about the eye contact and waving your arms around a good start. So incorporating your talk and your structure. We'll talk a bit about that stuff. And then later on in the day, I'll get you up and do a few drills and you can introduce your you can introduce your uh, cycling equipment. I hate being put on the spot like that. Do you? Mm. Yeah. Why do you think? I, I'm a trained university lecturer, so I'm used to standing up in front of people and stuff, but I just hate doing it when I know I'm being watched. <laughs> <laughs> Post to a lecture. I well, know, but when it's a <laughs> lecture, no, the thing is, I like, guess no when you're in a lecture, no, when, yeah, when you're in a lecture, you know, you as a general know more than what they know. Whereas in a situation like this, it's like you're picking their nose. Look at, look at what they're wearing. You know, because you're more critical because it's your peers and everything. I hate it. Okay. You can go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go first and get it's it over with. Yeah. 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 Like it's easy to present to your athletes because you know you know more than them, and so you, whatever you say goes. <laughs> you're not going to get challenged. That's an assumption, though. That's an assumption. Wow. Yeah, I've got one that's that studying fine mechanics at school and stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, presumably, yeah. if they knew more than you, though, they'd be coaching, not you. But one would, <laughs> imagine, no, one, no one would imagine that you'd know more about this stuff than anybody else in the room. Probably not presenting it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we're very lucky you're in safe hands. <laughs> God help us. We're very lucky you're in safe hands. Anyway, forget all about that and turn to page 13. It talks about observable behaviours. Please. We'll talk about this and when we finish this, we're going to have a proper break. Is that from? Yep. We've actually got proper coffee here, Sean. Where did you get that from? Has it been there all day? That coffee is there. Coffee drinker. No, neither am I. It's revolting. Are they delivering often? Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I, mean, a, I have to. Okay. People with trucks that come driving around here ring them up and they do in five minutes. So I've got 17 long backs, five cappuccinos, three. Okay. I'll pay. There's enough time. Yeah. You can fill it on to the right way to coffee. It's a franchise. I've seen a coffee guy. Yeah, you do. It's a happy business. But I mean, any decent coffee shop, if you ring up, said, okay. Seen some kid down a bicycle and it'll be hot. Yeah, um, Whenever you sit or stand in front of people and coach, <laughs> talk, present <coughs> to them, they form an impression of you. You know that? You can't stop it, they don't write it down on a piece of paper, they just think she knows what she's about. Yes, looks very professional. This guy's well organised. Yeah, confident dude. I trust him.
good impressions of him. Nice guy. Well organised. Yeah, you can't stop that either. By the way, they're negative impressions too. Asshole. <laughs> Unprepared. Arrogant bastard. Sloppy. Unprofessional. Rude. Aloof. Distant. We at the university have actually like stood there and he wouldn't look up to all this talking like this. I can't. I always said I can't believe it, Rach, but I can believe it because I've seen it happen. And that goes against Jason's. Th th and what impression. No one in this room knows that person except you, is that right? You're the only person that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it's what impression did that create, do you think, to the students? He thought he was bored yeah. and didn't want to be there. Yeah. Going through the motions. Yeah. Just he was just actually, well, once we got to know him, he was an incredibly intelligent man, but he lacked social skills. Oh, isn't that sad? Should have done he a presentation. He was one of the heads of department and he just lacked well, yeah, social yeah. skills. How, how sad that a incredibly intelligent, gifted person that wanted to teach. I was never taught how to teach. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a difference getting out there and you know, coaching, if you're a great player, it doesn't make you a great coach. It's how you transfer those abilities to other people. That's the skill, isn't it? That's why you do these programs. But it's sad, Rachel. I'm a little bit sad. But I've seen it a million times. <laughs> I guess the, the, you know, everyone, you can, the other thing about impressions is that I told you this morning or this afternoon that people forget most of what you say. When you go home today and your partner or woman says to you, how was that day with your mates at the last coach program? What will you say? Yeah, don't, don't, tell, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Yeah, people, people often give an impression. They don't say, oh, I learned how important it was to plan for my sport and do this, this, and this. And some guy goes to look at people who talk to them. You know, I'm not going to say that. You know, you're probably going to say, I was alright, it was cold, it went on a bit long. My husband hates it because he asked me that and he's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you think it's sexual? It's good to say that because sometimes I ask that question, I don't really want to answer. That's where you're <laughs> Your husband is being a good husband and showing interest. He's really interested. He is a revamped version of the. So what? What I would suggest for you to learn from the archives. Oh, I'm those people from the better work stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like. So what I would suggest. <laughs> What I would suggest that you do is that you analyse your audience. <laughs> and when you, it is your husband, says to you, how was your day today? Say, it was a long day, love, and I'm glad I'm home with you. We did some stuff on We did some stuff on planning and it was really cool and I'm going to go and do more work now. And some guy told us about private presentations. <laughs> That'll be enough. See what he says. And if he says, that sounds interesting, tell me more, then go. Otherwise you'll go, well, what's for tea, love? <laughs> then you'll know that he was being nice because he loves you. He was just asking you. And this is more. <laughs> so, I guess what I'm saying is that psychologists say that the impression you create, coaching or sitting or standing in front of people talking to them, can be as important, sometimes more important, than actually the content. Am I thinking is that people forget most of it anyway, but they usually live for an impression. You know, when you go home, most of you, if anyone bothers to ask you how your day was, you'll say, you'll give an impression, it was okay today. Long day, but I'm home there. Now, where do those impressions come from? And that's why we're on this page for residual behaviors. Where, where do these impressions, how do you get the impression someone is professional, confident, well organized? Why the dress? Right, so Jason, how they look? The presence. Ah, who said that? The presence, right? Thank you. Which is what this is all about. This is the presence bit of the presentation. The presence. So how they dress, how they present themselves. Well done. What, how else? Somebody else. Body language. 
Give me some examples. I got absolutely slayed in one of my um, teaching reviews last year with folding my arms once during lesson. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good news is there's a place for folded arms. I like them. And, hey Jason, when you're cold, teacher, when I was buying this teacher, you say, Kevin Sims, fold your arms and stop fiddling. You say to me, I think I was an adult, I do that. Immediately when I start panicking, you can fold your arms and stop fiddling. Uh, when you're cold, when you want to be relaxed. So, for Two or three minutes on an hour long presentation, nobody cares, no one notices. If you did that for most of it, and you were trying to demonstrate something, or be passionate about your topic, you know, and show something that you really cared about, it's quite hard to do that. Well, I've tried that once in class, because I naturally took my hands, and the kids actually dared me to um, have my hands like this yeah. for the entire period. Did you? I did, but they said it was one of the funny, they wished I had a camera, but they said I was doing this pretty much the entire time as I was walking around the class. Well, <laughs> everyone is different. Everyone is different. Most New Zealanders use their hands when they communicate. Okay. Think, think socially in your lunch hour, if anyone here has a glass of wine or a beer with a colleague at any time, when you're talking with them, most people are doing that. It's amazing when you do presentations how when people stand up doing presentation that disappears. So it's quite a natural thing to do. If you do too much of it, it creates another impression. You know, if you don't do it at all, you don't look normal. So maybe rather than saying is a bit more, please, and then that presentation too. So well done. What you look wearing, what you're doing with your hands. Jason, you get a free one from this one. Eyes. Eyes. Before we go, can you speak? Well done. And John, that's not really observable, is it? Because you can't see it, but voice is definitely one of them. Tone, accent, pausing, loudness, inflection, ums, ums all those things. And, yeah. Voice is a key part of your delivery. Well done. You're pacing. So movement. I was going to say where you stand. Stance. Or posture. If you're sitting down, Eugene, you had one and I cut you off. No, no, I didn't know. Oh, <laughs> Very rarely you get a group that gets the whole lot. Ooh, that's Ooh. a challenge. Shall <laughs> so I give you a clue? No, that's it, yeah. Come on, people. Think. They relate to the audience? So the, all of that will come out. Yeah, all of that comes up, exactly. Which is what this is all about. So. Mm. Could it be to um, smile? Oh, Mishi. I was looking at him yeah. wondering yeah. what he was doing. <laughs> By the way, a smile is a subset. <laughs> it could be a frown or a lock, rolling of the eyes when someone does something silly. Here we go again. <laughs> Mad person. So it could, it could be any of those things. So I guess what I'm saying to everybody is that Whenever you're sitting or standing in front of people talking to them, these are the, you talk about toolboxes before for coaching. Well, presenters have toolboxes too, and these are the sort of things that you would use to help you get your message across in a sort of a normal, colourful way that creates an impression for you. Now, we're not going to do it today because we don't have time, but if I, was, if I run workshops and this sort of stuff quite regularly, then it could be two or three days long, and people get up and present, and be off in video, we don't always do it, because some people don't like it, and we sit down and say, right, Right, here's the thing for you, mate. You know, your eye contact's great, big strong, strap and blank, the stance is good, you know, getting all excited in your hands are like this all the time. It's sort of something missing. Have a little go over and you'll see what happens for you. The arm thing, the techniques for that sort of stuff too. So you know, to give everyone their lighting and courage, I guess, to help be as normal as you can be and look better. Say something. No. We're thinking something.
I'm thinking it. What are you thinking? I'm just, I'm just thinking about what I do. So. I think you've got a great with, voice. With, there you a, go. with an intimate group that I know, and I'm really good with, you know, and you spend a lot of time with, I'm cool, but get into these situ situations and speaking against public voters and find out. Did you know that standing before a group and speaking is the greatest fear of mankind? Every year they publish a list. It's in the book called the Book of Lists. Very good if you do trivia pub quizzes like I do every Wednesday night. I can tell you all the flags that have stars on them, and the highest mountains are, and all that sort of stuff. One of them is the greatest fears of mankind, John. And every year, by miles, speaking before the group, it's up there. People hate it. And you're right, with his friends, family, loved ones. It's only going to get worse too, isn't it? With more and more people like, you know, getting into contact with others in right, less right. direct manners. Mm. And, and, and they don't, yeah, and, and they don't always, sometimes it's done by mm. Skype, or sometimes mm, yeah. it's not even done live. And by the way, death, there's four on the list. What's in the two three? Heights is what is two or three. I can't get I, I can I'll send it to you if you want to know. <laughs> That's Seinfeld. Anyone old enough to remember Seinfeld on TV? Yeah. He used to say that you can never understand why people would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. <laughs> because he read the study, you know, people would rather be dead than standing in front of people. Heights, insects and bugs, financial problems, deep water, uh, catching an incurable disease, terrorism, dogs. Is that, is that getting near 10? I think you're speaking in front of people because you can act quite so easily have a negative experience with it, then it can like make that seem a lot worse moving forward. And, I think so many people don't practice saying it out loud before they do it. And like for the young ones and people that I've worked with in terms of speaking, like even just getting them to read it out loud to themselves yeah. and then go on, on to give a speech, like that's probably been the biggest um, thing that's helped people be able to speak it, even hearing it out loud. It's such an important thing, communication, as coaches. But the same, like I said earlier, the thought of having to get up in front of this group is a little bit scary. We sort of know each other a bit. And talking in front of my athletes doesn't phase me in, at all, and I imagine John's probably the same. It doesn't bother you because I think it's because you do it day in, day out, and whereas something like this is something that we haven't really done. We've sat here and spoke about ourselves, but we haven't actually got up there and done it. And to me, sitting here, I could do it quite easily, but standing up there, changes the whole, even though it's just the same people looking at me, it just changes the whole thing. Are you recording this, Matt? It's all on tape. I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> Rachel, come up here.